this painting is sort of a milestone painting. Um, I'm really proud of it. Not that I'm not proud of all of them, but this one in particular, titled Immersion. I worked on it for two days. Not that I couldn't have done it in one day, but you know, pacing. Um, anyway, the topic of this video is going to be being a skeptic of psychology as a psychology student and a person with mental illness. And also, like, I guess, having people with mental illness in my family. Um, I started studying psychology in 2019. I enrolled in college in, I want to say, early February, maybe January even, I'm not sure. I started in the summer, though. Um, I was really excited to start, as I was, like, with, like, most schooling. But, like, I, mean, I don't know, I'm a year in, and I'm really sort of, like, disenchanted from the experience. Because I've heard other people who study psychology also say that they're, like, once you start, it's really not what you think it is. And that's kind of, like, how I said in, I want to say, two videos ago, that, like, psychology, because it is a, it's, like, a social science, it's kind of a no-shit science. Where it's, like, you know people, you sort of, like, know what to expect after a certain point. Um... I am still struggling through, like, the muddle of prerequisite courses for psychology to even, de like, get into, like, deeper courses. I don't want to be a therapist. I wanted, I wanted to go into research, but a lot of the coursework is aimed at people who are going into therapy or counseling, um, outreach, social work type of things, and that's not really my interest. I kind of just based off some of the courses I've taken, like my animal psychology class, really kind of showed me that I don't think I'm suited, like emotionally suited for dealing with, like, I don't know, what people condemn as heavy issues and subject matter, because I do have panic disorder and anxiety. And I'm some, I mean, surprisingly, I am very empathetic, though a lot of people say that I'm not super duper empathic. I, I am, actually, and it makes it a lot more difficult taking these classes, kind of having my eyes opened up to, like, all the ways, like, within, like, the media and, like, just, like, around you that people are being, like, shaped and molded in, like, ways that could be traumatic, and it's just, ugh, it's really hard to think about. Uh, I mean, so far, a lot of what I've learned, I've tried to take it and apply to myself selfishly and kind of like somehow carve out my own sort of thing because i've looked into work and all these types of things to like you know that you're supposed to have in mind like oh what field are you going to go into like i said i wanted to go into research i didn't have anything specifically in mind it's like research and maybe like children but i haven't really gotten farther than that i've had a hard time finding a lot of jobs or like things that are interesting i had a therapist suggest going into art therapy because i do art so maybe this is sort of me doing like a trial run though I don't think this is really quite the same thing whatever <laughs> but um I've taken abnormal psychology intro to psychology developmental psychology yeah those are the three courses and I think I only have the psychology of personality and I think there's another one I can't remember what it is I can't remember um but they're all very they've been very redundant of information like it just reiterates information that was like introductory psychology but like adding small bits and portions and random pieces together and like I, I brought up the abnormal psychology class that class was like very hard for me and I think the professor was actually really bad when I was in the class I I didn't really think she was bad I just thought she was she was uh I don't know. I don't know. I didn't really think about it at the time as her being a bad teacher or professor or whatever. But I don't know. For someone teaching abnormal psychology, almost all of her coursework like fed into stigma and took away from the person. And like people on this discussion board, because I'm taking classes online because that's where I'm at right now. Um, 
all the courses and like all the all the material that she chose for this course like really fed into like negative conversations and stigma and like completely neglected the person and there was a point on the discussion boards where like they were attacking people with eating disorders and I brought it to her attention that she was just like really dismissive of it she used like a lot of outdated case studies and I even I, I got to like my low slow and I went to reddit and I read it and like all the other people were like yeah no that doesn't really sound like a good course or like a good professor but you know hindsight it just, I don't know, that abnormal psychology class and, like, the way that other students that want to go into being a therapist, like, were so willing to, like, attack somebody with an eating disorder. Forgetting, like, an eating disorder is a still an illness and, like, you can't expect someone with an eating disorder to not act like they have an eating disorder. Because we were looking at, like, pro-Anna websites. It was just, like, and then there was, like, different things about shooters and, like, mass, like, suicides after celebrities die. And I'm like, these are really abnormal cases, but we have to talk about them like they're normal. And I'm like, they're not the norm. Like, literally, literally, statistically, these are not commonplace things that happen all the time. So it was just, it was very hard. <sighs> Talking about it. Going back. While I was taking that class, I also took a sociology of deviance class, which also opened my eyes a lot. And really, like I said, made me dislike the abnormal psychology class and that professor. Um, and I also think that professor had a son who, I, I don't know if he had like, I don't I thought he had some sort of mental illness. And I'm just like, this is just really surprising that this is like the stuff that you chose to focus on. Like you're really doting on the negative. And I was like, the realization and kind of disconnects back to scarred by illusion in case you just think this is like pointless rambling. Um, I feel like abnormal psychology from the medical standpoint like how they use it the, how it like negates a person i hope this is making sense um <laughs> talks about like i just feel like it reflected the side that people want to like don't want to accept is like part of humanity that like people can be dark i don't want to say that people can be bad but like there's like a, a spectrum i guess of like people you know like people are capable of doing all types of things and I they always want to put it in like a on like a weird like otherworldly like oh yeah that person is bad so they're like a demon or they're the devil and I'm like you're a person people are a range of things they have all types of capacities and I'm like this is just something that I think people are really uncomfortable with and I think that's like a major issue with mental illness and stuff like just because something makes you uncomfortable doesn't make it bad you know at least in the mental health standpoint like certain things like, all the murder, like, people that are really into, like, true crime and things, like, they're, like, literally, almost at the end of every episode, that's, like, the point that they get to, where, they're like, this person is just the worst, you know, like, they're the devil, it's just, it's really weird, I'm just, like, this is part of what people are, you know, I don't have expectations, limitations for what I think people can do, so I'm, like, it's not really mind-blowing that people do sketchy things, it's just, like, oh, that's unsettling, but I'm not, like, oh, that's not a person, anymore and it's just i don't know i think that's like a moral dilemma like a major thing within like people that i've observed is that like they like to like create i don't know like that's not a person like they really like that division to keep them comfortable and i feel like scarred by illusion it's like i don't set limits on what i'm going to do or like my boundaries and i just i don't know does that make sense does that make sense and ugh, going back down coming back down carl rogers is really the only like psychologist that I learned about that I kind of was like oh he's all right he's all right he was very 70s he was very like people aren't innately bad it's just like basically life happens to people and that's where a lot of the issues come in because you get caught up in like conventionality and all these other things are like thrown at you and it really obstructs your natural path that you that like you're kind of born with like inside you always have like a natural thing where you're like oh this is what I want to do this is and then like stuff that's happening and you're like wow it's making it really hard for me to just like be my true authentic self and like i said the thing with the discussion board with abnormal psychology is like that gave me a panic attack several things within several of my college courses have been the source of like i developed a very nasty eye twitch because of this like it was really taking a toll on me mentally which is also why i'm not really applying myself like i used to because i'm just like fuck this shit this is really not good for me anymore and i'm like i just i just i don't know I don't know.
within this. I realized that, like, medical perspective of psychology doesn't recognize illnesses in people, regardless of race and gender, like, the same way. And then I was like, wow, this isn't really, like, one-track minded. And, like, when I brought this up to somebody on Reddit, they're like, wow, you have, like, a victim mentality. Because I brought up the point of, like, like, racial bias. Like, race is, like, an afterthought. Hermione. Race comes on as, like, an afterthought within a lot of, like, these case studies, if it's ever brought up, or, like, within the textbooks. But it's not, like, as extensive for people of color women or like people of a certain age or like you know like they're so it was just like really difficult to like accept this information i don't know it was an awful class it really really fucked me up but that was the point i did not remember that i wanted to include like uh, on reddit was that like she didn't use people at all like no modern day people didn't have anybody like like, there weren't any first, first-hand accounts of mental illness and, like, their experiences. Like, I personally really love going through YouTube and finding different people's mental health stories and, like, journeys and stuff because I think that those are, like, truer and, like, I think more valuable at times than just, like, the medical approach or, like, what you're reading in a textbook. Like, the first one that I found, I think, what was it? Hitomi Majizuki. I can't remember exactly what her name is. If you know where you've seen her, you know what I'm talking about. But, like, her story of being in a mental hospital, or, like, I can't remember what it was called, it really aligned to this book that I read when I was in eighth grade, where it was, like, it's kind of a funny story by Ned Nizinski. Wow, I'm really bad with names. I'm terribly sorry. Where he recounted his experience in a mental hospital through a fictional character but it was basically based off his real experience and he wrote the book like briefly after his own stay in a mental hospital i can't remember if he was a teen or if he was an adult but it's in in like the voicing of a teen and i just i really i was the first time i was like oh wow i found it super relatable first off and i found it like i don't know i like really connected to it, it was one of the first times i like when i read a book when i was younger where i really connected to it and that's kind of the reason why I think I wanted to work with children, because I was like, there was just something, like, really powerful about, like, youth voices, in a way, that I, I don't think older people have, you know? I don't know. And then there was another book. I read, like, so many books, but that had, like, mental health undertones. There was another one called OCD, The Dude and Me. I really liked that book, too. Um... She had, like, PTSD. It was a bunch of stuff. She had, like, it was, but it was, like, I really, I really liked it. And I thought it was, like, very powerful. So. Does this video have a solid, a solid point to it? I hope you found it. Because I did have an outline, but I'm not sure I stuck to it. Uh, closing points. I started a coffee, I think that's how you pronounce it. I created it to kind of take place over my Patreon because I don't have a reward system and I don't have any sort of means to do that. So, yeah, that is there in my description. And if you appreciated this video or found something that you liked, feel free to thumbs up or subscribe for more conversations most likely pertaining to mental illness where i may also ramble some more because i did lose track of what it was i was trying to get across midway through